This week on the show, we have celebrity doctor, psychiatrist, and brain specialist, Dr. David Amen. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kick start your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of focusing your attention on things that uplift you rather than drain your energy. We've all had those experiences where we encountered a negative person or situation that put a damper on our day because of something they said or did. Maybe you even engaged back with this person and were left feeling drained. Energy flows where our attention goes. So preserving your precious attention on things that inspire and uplift you and give you peace is essential to living a happy and fulfilling life. Your time and attention is one of the most precious gifts you can give someone. So make sure it's directed in a positive direction. Make it your mission today to disengage in people or situations that attempt to take away your peace and redirect your energy towards practicing emotional intelligence without the need to negatively react. As the Dalai Lama quotes, don't let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, I know that your clinic has the world's largest database of functional brain scans, over thousands of scans with uh, 93 countries of scans of different people. So how does these scans help people better understand what's happening in their brains? Well, if you never look, you just never really care yeah. about the health of your brain. If you look and you see it's healthy, you want to keep doing those habits. If you look, which is common for us, and you see it's unhealthy, you really think twice about drinking alcohol because alcohol is not good for your brain. You really think twice about using marijuana because that's not good for your brain. You fall in love with your brain and then you treat it better. Um, Bella Hadid uh, went public, but I was her doctor and after she saw her scans, which were not healthy, she stopped drinking. And it's, it's what I see over and over. You develop this concept I call brain envy. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have celebrity doctor, Dr. Daniel Amen, who is the founder of Amen Clinics and practices as a psychiatrist and brain specialist. He is also a 12-time New York Times bestselling author, educating millions of people worldwide on focusing on brain health. Thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing today? Well, thank you so much. I'm filled with gratitude for you helping me share this message. I am very excited to talk to you. I absolutely love your work and we're going to dive into it in just a little bit. But before we get into that, let's talk about, you know, you're a celebrity doctor, psychiatrist. Um, so let's talk about when did you want to get into the health and wellness space? And let's also talk about your clinics, Dr. Amen Clinics. So when I was 18, Vietnam was going on and I became an infantry medic. And that's where my love of medicine was born. But about a year into it, I realized I didn't really like being shot at. So I got myself retrained as an x-ray technician, developed a passion for medical imaging. As our professors used to say, how do you know unless you look? And then in 1975, I got out of the army, finished, finished college, went to medical school, and someone I loved tried to kill herself. And I took her to see a wonderful psychiatrist. And I came to realize if he helped her, which he did, it wouldn't just help her, that ultimately it would help her children and even her grandchildren as they would be shaped by someone who was happier and more stable. So about 44 years ago, I fell in love with psychiatry and I've literally loved it every day since. And, but I fell in love with the only medical specialty that never looks at the organ it treats. And I knew that was wrong. I knew it would change. And I have 11 clinics now across the United States. And we do brain imaging for people who have brain and mental health challenges. 
Mm -hmm. And let's talk about that. I know that your clinic has the world's largest database of functional brain scans, over thousands of scans with uh, 93 countries of scans of different people. So how does these scans help people better understand what's happening in their brains? Well, if you never look, you just never really care <laughs> yeah. about health of your brain. If you look and you see it's healthy, you want to keep doing those habits. If you look, which is common for us, and you see it's unhealthy, you really think twice about drinking alcohol because alcohol is not good for your brain. You really think twice about using marijuana because that's not good for your brain. You fall in love with your brain and then you treat it better. Um, Bella Hadid uh, went public that I was her doctor and after she saw her scans, which were not healthy, she stopped drinking. And it's, it's what I see over and over. You develop this concept I call brain envy. You want to <laughs> love and care for your brain. And I live in Newport Beach where we have more plastic surgeons than almost anywhere in the world. And I often say we care more about our faces, our breasts, our bellies, and our butts than we do our brain. And that's insane. Yeah, absolutely. The funny thing about this is I always promote this on the show is that, you know, your brain dictates your whole life. Really, it, our brain is what operates everything. I mean, it's how we, it's, it, it operates about how we feel, our thoughts. So I always never understood that people, you know, they work out, but they don't focus also on their brain health. And that's something that you also promote. I want to talk about your new book, Change Your Brain Every Day. Let's talk about some of the concepts that you talk about. And also, you're all, you also promote brain health. So let's talk about that as well. Um, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I wrote down this sentence mental hygiene is just as important as washing your hands mm -hmm. and brain and mental health are daily practices but nobody knows what to do mm -hmm. and so change your brain every day is 366 short essays on the most important things i've ever said it's meant to be read just one a day two or three minutes and then a couple of minutes of an exercise so that we can plant love for your brain and then doing the right things every day. And you don't have to do everything at once and that's why it's just one simple thing a day and it'll just make a radical difference. If you do, if you follow along the program in just a few weeks, you're really gonna stop doing things that hurts your brain and engage in regular brain healthy habits. And it's not because you should, it's because you love yourself. It's because you want to. It's, you know, you begin to see things like alcohol and too much social media and sitting on the couch and not taking your supplements is the enemy of what you truly want. Because when you really get to it, most people want what I want, which is energy mm -hmm. and memory and clarity and good decision making and connection and meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. And so when you see the plate of French fries or you see the bottle of whiskey, you realize those things are the enemy of your goals. But you have to get clarity first, which is something that happens very early in the book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that you start your day by saying today is going to be a great day. I know for me personally, I use affirmations to kind of help program my subconscious mind. So let's talk about that. What are some daily practices that you use uh, to set yourself up for a great day? So when my feet hit the floor in the morning, today is going to be a great day. And then my brain goes through my day looking for what I'm excited about. And my favorite exercise is when I go to bed at night, I say a prayer and then I go, what went well today? And I start at the beginning of the day and not just looking for the big things that went well, I'm looking for the micro moments of happiness that happened to me that day, a hummingbird, a butterfly, 
holding my wife's hand, um, a great meal, simple things that make me happy. So I'm training my mind to look for what's right, not just for what's wrong. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's, it's, it's simple. Just saying today is going to be a great day. But I feel that by saying that, you know, your brain is looking for data to back that, you know, fact up and you start seeing things differently, right? You see the sunshine, you see a beautiful bird, you see, you know, just great things. So I really like that mentality. And right now, you know, we have a pandemic of, of mental disorders, of people going through a rough time with um, mental issues. So let's talk about, you know, what are some things that you do to help your clients get through mental health problems? So I actually don't think of them as mental illnesses. I think calling someone mental shames them. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants it. Yeah. But everybody wants a better brain. So if you ask me, it's like, hey, Daniel, what have you learned from 225,000 brain scans that I've done over the last four decades? I learned most psychiatric problems are not mental health issues at all. Rather, they are brain health issues that steal people's minds. Get your brain right and your mind will follow. And when you reimagine mental health as brain health, everything changes. So, for example, your diet has to change because if it's brain health, well, you have to feed your brain properly. If it's brain health, you really should not be texting while you're driving because you're more at risk for a brain injury. If it's brain health, you have to get off the couch and exercise because low blood flow is the number one brain imaging predictor of Alzheimer's disease. Um, and so I hate the concept of mental illness, shames people, stigmatizing wrong. When I told my dad I wanted to be a psychiatrist, he asked me why I didn't want to be a real doctor, why I wanted to be a nut doctor and hang out with nuts all day long. Now, my dad would not get father of the year award. But he, his comment reflects what society believes about people who have mental health issues. So I'm on a mission to end the concept of mental illness by creating a revolution in brain health. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of how we feel or negative thoughts or even mental health problems, you know, these are these are things that are on a subconscious level that we're not even aware of that kind of dictate how we think. So so how do you help clients kind of understand on a subconscious level um, some of the problems that they're having? You know, I always think of people in four big circles. It's what's the biology. So how's your brain working and your body working? Mm -hmm. What's the psychology? How do you think? And I often say, you know, we're living in a society filled with ants, automatic negative thoughts, the thoughts that come into your mind automatically and ruin your day. I was 28 years old in my psychiatric residency when I heard one of my professors say, you have to teach your patients not to believe every stupid thing they think. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but I believe every stupid thing I think. Yeah. And just learning how to kill the ants, how to correct and direct my thoughts, it, it, it was miraculous how good it is. I think of that as basic training. And so for your listeners, whenever they feel sad or mad or nervous or out of control, write down what you're thinking. And then just ask yourself whether or not it's true. And then write down what you're thinking and flip it to the opposite and ask yourself if the opposite of the thought that's bothering you couldn't in fact be true as well. So learning to manage and direct your mind, another fun exercise I tell in the book, it's a day of, it's a day of the 366 days, is give your mind a name. And I often say in lectures, how many of you were good at talking back to your parents when you were a teenager? I was excellent. So you talk to my folks and he's like, he was a pain. 
But no one ever taught me to talk back to myself, right? Just because you have the thought has nothing to do with whether or not it's true, whether or not it's helpful, whether or not you should keep it. So there is a discipline to your mind that quite frankly they should have taught us in second grade and should have reinforced it every year just like they reinforce your native language every year you know here in the US we have to take English um, we should be taking brain health mind health because uh, that's the way to start making a dent on this epidemic mm -hmm. And you know, one thing that I get from you is that you're very self-aware with your thoughts and your words. So how do you think self-awareness helps to kind of program the brain and be more conscious of how you think? Well, you know, ultimately thoughts create feelings and feelings create behaviors and behaviors create outcome. Mm -hmm. And so if you have an undisciplined mind, the outcome in your work, in your money, in your relationships, it's risky. But when you discipline your mind, when you know what you want and you act consistently over time to get it because your brain is healthy, everything in your life seems to be better. And I was talking about the four circles we talked about biology, psychology, social circle, it's how you get along with other people. There's dozens of days on that in the book, but my favorite one is notice what you like more than what you don't like. If you just today notice what you like about the people in your life, you're gonna notice you're gonna start influencing them powerfully in a positive way. And the spiritual circle is what the heck do you want? Why are you on the planet? What is your deepest sense of meaning and purpose? Because purposeful people live longer. Mm -hmm. I want to dive into that a little bit about spirituality because, you know, as I noticed, people work on their physical appearance, as you said, you know, in Hollywood, in North America, but we rarely focus on our brain health and actually, you know, uh, you know, doing affirmations, reading more, you know, filling our brains with uplifting content. So let's talk a little bit about that in a, a three practical steps, you know, that we can use to to improve our brain health, just like little steps that people can do. Well, in the book, there are hundreds of tiny habits. You know, what's the smallest thing I can do today that'll make the biggest difference? And when my daughter, who's now 19, when she was two, she and I used to play this game every day called Chloe's Game. Is this good for my brain or bad for it? So if I said blueberries, she would say, are they organic? Because non-organic blueberries hold more pesticides than almost any fruit. And I'm like, of course they're organic. She said, two thumbs up, God's candy. If I said avocados, she'd go two thumbs up, God's butter. If I said, hit in a soccer ball with your head, she'd roll her eyes at me and go, are you stupid? The brain is soft, the skull is hard, the skull has sharp bony ridges. If I said talking back to your redheaded mother, she'd go, oh, very bad. And it's that little tiny habit. When you go to do something, come drinking green tea, um, is this good for your brain or bad for it? And you just have to know the list. And I guarantee you, at the end of Change Your Brain Every Day, you'll know the list. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about manifestation and the law of attraction and also using your brain to, to you know, create thoughts and beliefs that manifest things in your life. What are your thoughts on that? Um, your brain makes happen what it sees. Mm -hmm. And so if you're always predicting tragedy, you're going to struggle with anxiety and panic attacks. But if you're predicting success, um, your frontal lobes are just much more likely to make it happen. You need to tell your brain what you want. I tell a story in the book about a condition, a psychiatric condition called pseudosiasis. And what that means is false pregnancy. If a woman believes she is pregnant, even though she's not, 
But if unconsciously she believes it, her body actually starts to take on the shape of a pregnant woman. Wow. I've seen this nine times mm -hmm. in my career. It's always very interesting. She'll stop having periods. Uh, her breasts will get larger. Her lower abdomen will be fuller. She may, may even secrete milk from her nipples. And it's, it's totally freaky when you realize she's not pregnant mm -hmm. at all. Her unconscious mind believes she's pregnant. So if you can train your mind to believe uh, what you want and see it in a positive way, uh, you're more likely to manifest it. Mm -hmm. And what's one brain hack that you use to kind of get things done? And I know like, for example, Mel Robbins has the three, two, one method. So what's something that you have, like a little trick that you use to maybe take action on something or that helps you not to pro procrastinate? <laughs> well, I keep to-do lists and I don't like them to build up. So, you know, it's my motivation and anxiety. The, the, the big one, though, is this little tiny habit. Is this good for my brain or bad for it? I'm turning 69 this year, and I've seen way too many older brains. And mm -hmm. it's just bad news, right? As yeah. your skin falls off your face as you age, that same process happens in the brain. And um, a lot of people go, oh, I don't want to be anxious. And I think of anxiety from like zero to 10. And I always want to be about a three because people with low levels of anxiety die the earliest from accidents and preventable illnesses. So I want to have a big, fat, full brain my whole life. And if that's true, that means I need to do the right things because if I don't, 50% of people 85 and older will develop Alzheimer's disease or another form of dementia, five zero. I'm not okay with that, to have a 50% chance of having lost my mind. And so it's okay to use a bit of fear to keep you on the right track. Mm -hmm. How do we keep our brains young? I mean, as you know, as we age, as you said, it's physically, but it's also mentally. We see that decline, um, you know, in our grandparents and things like that, um, them not being as sharp. So how do we keep our brains um, young and healthy? Well, it's basically three things. You care about it. So that's brain envy we talked about. You avoid anything that hurts it, know the list. And you do things that help it. And it's a daily practice. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, you know, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift, and, you know, to showcase anything is possible. So I want to ask you for, you know, there are so many people that are going through a hard time all over the world right now. As you know, there's a mental health crisis. And what for the person that, you know, just is unmotivated, that doesn't want to get out of bed, what would you say to uplift and inspire them? The brain and mental health are daily practices. I would say pick up the book and get started only a few minutes a day. When you fall in love with your brain, when you see mental health really as brain health, every decision changes in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And we're going to link all the information for your book below so our viewers can uh, read it because it has very good advice. And you know, for our viewers that want to get a brain scan of their own and learn more about your clinics, where can they do so? Amenclinics.com. So Amen, like the last word in a prayer, clinics.com. You can also follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Um, we love teaching people to love and care for their brains. Thank you so much, Dr. Eamon, for being on the show today. I love that you're using your passion uh, to inspire people. You know, your little daily TikToks and your Instagram posts are so useful and they're, they're inspiring people all over the world. So thank you for your amazing work. Thank you for helping me share the message. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch live through YouTube and Facebook. Yeah.